Hi, Jen. Hey. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Mm. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Good. Good. Okay. Whoa. So, can we just go around the room and introduce yourselves again for Dave? This is Dave Scott, Fault of Commander. I did a similar thing to uh, Jay. I, I was working with Google Earth. Uh, but but rather than repeating that, you know, I, I concentrated more on finding the, the images, the best images I could find, and downloading those. And everything that I've downloaded and produced and written is on this. So this is yours. Oh, thanks. Oh, wow. Uh, Aren't these airplane, airplane reading. So, uh, hey, so, um, let me get this over here. Oh, that's pretty. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Front yard. Don't tell them where we found that. Okay. Yeah, I know. Don't. We're not supposed to find that. All right. So here we are. Um, this is this is station one, and you continued up the Apennine front. Now, evidently, from what I was reading, is that Saint George Crater uh, was was in, the, the the notion was that perhaps Saint George Crater had produced some objective that you could sample, uh, and it's of course Saint George. Crater excavated deeply into the Apennine front, um, but when you got there, you found, as you've been already talking, very few boulders. So you came, up, you stopped short of that point, still up on the front, and uh, let me uh, let me show you the uh, context here. Um, bring another screen over. Now this is this is a side-facing view of of the landing site area, so. You, you landed generally in this area here, came across, here's Elbow Crater, and then you skirted up this front area right here. And according to my best estimate from the images I'm looking at, you, you, Station 2 is right here, right below this 30 meter crater. There's a couple of 10 meter craters right in this area. This is a view from the stand-up EVA. Uh, in fact, you mentioned the Spur Crater, a uh, Spur, Silver Spur, Silver Spur. Yeah, there it is. Um, this is a color image. Uh, you, you, you also uh, took a 500 millimeter image of that, which is excellent. But anyhow, m my interest, of course, is Station 2, and that crater that I was pointing to, that 30 meter diameter crater is right here, and Station 2 is generally in this area. There was a bunch of 10 meter shallow craters in this area. Hmm. And so here, here's um, a panorama taken from that area. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit. There's a rock. Yeah, this, this, is the, this, is, this is about a, a large suitcase size boulder. Um, I'm estimating 300 to 400 kilograms. Uh, it was it was the only, as you described in, in your transmission back to Houston, that it was the only boulder of that size in the area. But also from up here uh, is a very good view of the rill itself. Yeah, that's when we really got a good view of the rill. Wow. Yes. Let me uh, continue on. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some more of those, but here, you are taking a first look at the uh, the boulder. And here's another another uh, panorama from further up. There's the boulder for a sense of where you are, and there are these shallow craters about eight to ten meters in diameter in the area. Uh, one of the core samples was taken right from the rim of this crater right here, the, the double core. And this is just a high resolution of the last image, but you can see all the boulders along that along the wall here. Okay, so here's here's a, a sequence of, of images of the boulder. And the first thing that's curious about it is you have the boulder and you have this pit right in front of it. And uh, you were commenting from the moon that you were su suggesting maybe that this was where the boulder landed from wherever it came from, and if that is the case. Uh, it, the, the boulder landed in this pit, produced the pit, and then rolled out. Uh, you also commented quite a bit about the fillet here, which was curious because the boulder itself uh, looked fairly fresh. It didn't look eroded. 
And then when you walk around behind the boulder, you notice that, that there's no fillet on the backside, just, just, just at, the, at the interface with the pit. That's, uh, that's, that's, pretty, that's really amazing, actually. Well, the thing is, the fillet normally is considered to be material that's being eroded from the boulder and co collecting at the bottom. But here, the, the fillet is probably just material that got pitched up under the boulder as it was rolling out of the pit. So it's a mantle on the of the impact on it, as opposed to anything that's produced by the boulder itself. And you, you know, that was your hypothesis even on the moon, and it, it's confirmed by the, there's no, there's nothing even resembling a fillet really around the, uh, the other edges. Okay, here, here's, uh, you describe a vesicular basalt, in fact, you comment uh, that you found a contact, which is indeed a contact, uh, that was, that's verified. But here's the, the vesicular nature of the basalt. And, 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 and let's see, I'll show you, yeah, here are the two samples you took from the boulder. You took one from up here, which is above the fascicular basalt area, and then the, the, below the contact line, you took another sample right here. Now, as far as the geochemistry of these two samples, they're identical, but the, but the, the structure is very different. This is a crystalline basalt, uh, apparently it was placed and, and it was not terribly disturbed, whereas this basalt, below the contact line is heavily brecciated and injected with impact oh. melt. So it apparently, this would be my interpretation, is that this is the upper part is a newer flood basalt emplacement on top of an older flood basalt emplacement that was more heavily modified. Where did it come from? Oh, oh that, I'm, I'm going to get to that. Oh, okay. that of course, that's my, that, that's my head interest. Where they, where yeah. they okay, so here's, here's one of the samples from the the uh, top of the boulder. Uh, this is the crystalline sample, and here here's the uh, mm. uh, brecciated sample. Yeah. Okay, so then you, you roll the rock over uh, to get a soil sample from below, and what, what's what's pretty obvious about the rock is that it, it has a coating of glass. Uh, the glass is all over yeah, this, yeah. And, you know, a few millimeters and. Thick. And in the samples, um, when they looked at the nature of the glass, it was clearly the glass was molten at, at, you know, at the time that this boulder was launched from wherever it came from. It has features that are consistent with melt that's being pulled apart. So it has sort of a separation kind of features. Uh, so that, that strongly suggests that, that this is impact melt from the primary impactor that launched this, this boulder from wherever it came from. Here's a sequence of 500 millimeter uh, photographs of, of the, the nearby portion of the rim. Um, and uh, a couple uh, sequences looking up the rim. And you can see in, in the, in the, in the uh, side of the, the wall of the rim, there are all these boulders that are very similar morphologically to the boulder that you're studying up on the, on the hillside. Here's, a, here's another view. These are very large. These are house-sized boulders here. But there's a, there's a distribution from that size on down. Um, so it, it wouldn't be just my own idea, but, but there's, there's strong speculation that there's there, perhaps this impact right here into the wall. Ra rather than breaking up the boulder and producing the boulder and launching the boulder, um, that, you know, the, the size of that boulder is too big for a small crater to produce. It, it, typically, a small crater would not produce a boulder that big. But if you already had a distribution of boulders in the wall, oh, a small, out, huh? yeah, small crater oh. gets under it and launches it, just like a, yeah, like a yeah. cannon. Um, and, and, you know, it, okay, so this is about a little more than, here's site two right here. This is a little more than a kilometer. And there, there are other similarly sized uh, you know, impact craters into the wall in the vicinity. Um, a, a kilometer flight, you know, that sounds like it, it, you would expect maybe a deeper pit on the other side, but it was all uphill. So by the time it got to site two, it was near the apex of its flight. So it, it, the velocity could easily have been as low as 30 meters per second or maybe oh, yeah. even less. And that would be oh. consistent with a, with, a, with a dent in the regolith, and not really even a crater. So, so to answer your question, uh, it's, it's fairly consistent uh, with, with the with a, with a boulder in the wall of the, uh, of the oh, yeah. So it, it's very likely, and it can be argued, but there, there's really no better explanation. And you found a sample of the wall of the rim. Wow, pretty interesting, yeah.
Oh. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm troubled. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is a yeah. Yeah. this is near the boulder. This is just a, a to show you how to mature the, the regular rocks. There are very few uh, rocks in the regular. This is before some rake sampling, um, and here are some of the rake samples. Um, you can see some olivine. The, the characteristics of, of the rake samples um, were, were similar to other rake samples at the site. Not, not just not just station two, but the entire uh, area. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe to comment now. Also, the rake was new, right? Yeah, yeah. Rake was new, okay. and the core was new. We had the larger diameter core tube, and there was a great deal of discussion as to whether the material would not stay in the core because it was so big, yeah. and it all worked just fine. So the double core with a higher diameter was also a new item. In fact, I got a letter from the PI on that afterwards, I think, saying, oh, thank you for taking that core with a wide diameter, it worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, on the, the flash drive I gave you, I, I included all the documentation of the samples, but mm -hmm. the, uh, the core, um, was more um, mare-like near the top and more anorthosidic near the bottom. Mm. There was a slight distribution in that direction. Mm. Okay, and these are you, you collected seven small stones uh, in the rake, and, and then there was well six in the rake and then one in the soil sample. Jim was a raker, and uh, there's documentation on all of those. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was. I mean, you, you actually put him to work because he said, Jim, you didn't find anything. You've got to do that again. Well, there isn't anything there. <laughs> okay, so here, here's, a, here's a double core going in. There's a core, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, it, it went in fairly easily. Um, it, it really, the decision was to put it on, on the rim of this 10-meter crater. You, you saw another fresher crater up the side of, of the hill, but it was like a half a kilometer away, emission control. Hmm. Next to that. So, um, oh, okay. I'm stealing the cats over here, but uh, I, uh, so that, that's all the pictures I have. Um, cool. That's, that's really nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is our view. But uh, I, I personally, on a personal note, uh, I was 16 years old. I was home in the summer. I had nothing to do, and I was watching you guys really? on TV. And, and I remember the TV looking from here, looking up that reel, and I said, I guess that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. I never forgot that. Yeah. And I built a 12-inch telescope, and you know, later in life, and the first thing I went looking for was heavy ground. So, mm. so anyway, that, that's that's my person. Did you find it? Today? I did. Excellent. Yeah. It, took, it took quite a bit of work. But I did. Wow, that's pretty good. It's right, up, it's right on the edge of what you can see. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's all I have about station two.